we are in the home of Darren and Catherine Govender. So Darren, you were two weeks into your marriage and you heard some disturbing news. Would you share that with us? Uh, we were out shopping on our first weekend off, both of us. And uh, Catherine suffered an uh, epileptic fit in, in a shopping mall. She was then rushed to a hospital and uh, where she stayed there for three days. She was discharged, she was fine. Uh, thereafter, she wasn't, uh, she wasn't sleeping well and she would uh, wake up at odd hours and she's you know, um, behaving very weirdly. So I was very afraid, so I took her, as soon as uh, I had a chance, I took her back to the hospital. She was bedridden for about a month there. Uh, thereafter, the doctors were fairly confident in the beginning that they would probably get her right and uh, you know the baby would probably come out uh, with no issues. But as they got later, later, into the latter period of that month, they had a meeting with me and they said, right, we are going to have to treat this, uh, your wife more aggressively now, um, at a high risk of you losing the child. And, uh, you know, we save mothers and not babies, because mothers can always produce more babies, uh, that sort of thing. So um, I said to them, okay, you know, as long as Catherine is well, uh, that's fine. Do what you have to do, you know, whatever you think is best. They started to treat her very aggressively, uh, probably uh, about 16 tablets a day. You know, when you're pregnant, you can't even take a panado, you know, and she was taking 16 tablets a day. Uh, after that month, we had no joy at the hospital. We had no option but to, to bring her home, you know, and try to uh, care for her at home, which was a major challenge because she wasn't eating. Um, she wouldn't sleep through the night. A lot of us got worried, including, I mean, her parents as well as, uh, as, well as me, uh, when we stopped feeling movements of the baby in her tummy. There was because the baby used to kick, uh, and uh, she used to complain that the baby used to kick. You know, and then for about a week or going on two weeks, everything was was very quiet, and then everyone was fearing the worst. So I said, okay, to put everybody's um, mind at ease, I'll get the doctors to come here. The doctors came with their instruments, the Dopplers and stuff to check the heart rate. There was no heartbeat. Uh, they could hear no heartbeat, they couldn't feel no movement, that was... And they called me on the side and they said, no, we're sorry to report that you, you, the child is gone. And uh, the best thing to, for you to do is abort. Then we can start to proceed to, to treat Catherine. I was very despondent by that news because that was the only little bit of... In, and everything that was happening, that was a little bit of hope that we had, you know, that we were going to get through with the child. I think mutual friends of ours uh, said that, you know, that you were having a, a campaign or a crusade. That was a miracle, the normal complaint at Marvin. I said, no, you have to come. And at that stage, I was, you know, I, I had like no energy to do anything because wherever I had to take her, I had to, I had to wheel her in with a wheelchair. Um, so I was just, you know, I, I, I was really tired and I couldn't do it, but they insisted that I come. They said they'll even assist me to get her there. Then Darren and Catherine were taken with friends to the Miracles on Normal Crusade with Dr. Sylvan Woodley in Malvern, Durban. And I remember when we got into the crusade, we went right to the front seat. Catherine was not in a very good state at that time. And you prayed for her. And then I said to you, I said, the news I got was that the child wasn't moving. For a period of two weeks, we hadn't, uh, you know, felt any movements or anything. So thereafter, you prayed for her. You asked me if I believe that it can be done. And I remember my response was, anything is possible with, with our God. You said, no, just hold on, you, you know, just put your hand on the stomach when I tell you to. And then we did that, and then all of a sudden there was a kick. Me, in my own doubting ways, I'm thinking, oh, man, maybe I, you know, I felt what I wanted to feel, or I didn't, you know, or something of that sort. I came home. Saturday came, the nurse came back with the instrument and everything. She said, well, Darren, uh, you know, did you go the route that I said, no, I didn't. She said, well, what, you know, why, why not? I said, you know, I just take your instruments and everything and take Kathy in the room and, and check her out for me. So they went into, uh, went into the room. Five minutes later, the nurse is screaming for me. I got worried now and I thought, My, you know, what's going on here? So I went there and she says, but Darren, uh, I said, what, what, what's the problem? Is there anything wrong? She says, no, I don't understand. Your child has been cartwheels in the womb here. The heartbeat is going from here to there to there. I said, are you serious? And then she smiled and she says, I can't believe it. 
the, the other time when we checked it they were pressing her stomach deeply to try and get a movement from the child and there was nothing she says now she presses she feels this child moving kicking and all of that she, we were over the moon obviously we were just you know praising god and you know thank god for that then we went to the gynae who was who was a muslim lady and she looked and she says you know it's a miracle the child is alive you know but unfortunately you're not out of the woods yet um go for a 4d scan because of the amount of medication that this child has taken there's a high possibility that this child will be crippled i took her to dr dr borat in amshlanga rocks who is the best uh, at that stage kathan ate very little for an entire month also which is a huge concern about the baby's health he did a check he was he looked at me amazed he said your child's faculties are even better than normal the head circumference is perfect uh, all the fingers are there all the toes are there the spine curvature is perfect there is no issues with this child i said doctor one more thing she hasn't eaten for a month you know she's ate very little whatever we could get her nothing nutritious whatever she would open her mouth to get like yogurt or something we would give it to her and he said no your child is uh, about 2 kilos at that stage a 1.8 actually sorry and that is still 3 months from delivery my gynae had already received the report when i walked in she gave me a hug and she gave catherine a hug and she says you know um your child has defied medicine and she says but the god you pray for uh, is something special and she is a muslim lady and she has told me that and ever since then you know we were on track the baby was delivered perfectly in perfectly good health uh, no complications catherine then proceeded to get back to full health um, resumed her job where uh, her superiors at work said that she would never ever return to work given her state because i had to show her them she proved them wrong she returned to work she she went returned to driving um, she did all of those things yeah in absolute uh, perfect health she 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 has she was restored yeah this is young ezekiel ezekiel was dead the doctors said that there's no more heartbeat and 2 days later he came to our meeting and god raised him back to life so jesus said to philip i and the father are one when you see me you see the father we know that the trinity is one we know that jesus in colossians 2:9 that he is the fullness of the godhead bodily so everything that is god's nature everything that is god's desire everything that is god's plan everything that is god's purpose we see it in the life of jesus and jesus came as a perfect god but also as a perfect man you may ask well why was he a perfect man he was a perfect man to teach us how to be a perfect man or a perfect woman and we read about jesus and what he did in the book of acts chapter 10 verse 38 Let me read. It says God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. It does not say God anointed Jesus Christ. It says God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. The reason it says Jesus of Nazareth is referring to the humanity of Christ, the perfect man. The Bible says that God anointed this perfect man, Jesus of Nazareth. whom we should aspire to be like God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost so he's anointed first with the Holy Ghost and number 2 with power so he's been anointed with two things he's been anointed with the Holy Spirit and he's been anointed with power now many times i've heard people mix these two things up the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the anointing of power are not the same thing the power of god is not the holy spirit and the holy spirit is not the power of god he is the might of god yes but the anointing is not the holy spirit in the book of acts acts 1:8 that jesus says you shall receive power after after the holy spirit has come upon you we see this throughout scripture 
For example, when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan by John the Baptist, the Holy Spirit descended upon him. He was then led by the same Holy Spirit. He was not led by the devil. He was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. In the wilderness, he fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. And we know that he was tempted by the devil. And we know that he overcame the temptation of the devil with the word of God. But then something very interesting happens after the word is tested in Jesus. He returns in the power of the Spirit. He did not go into the wilderness with the power, but after the word was tested, he returned in the power. So first he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, and then after the word was tested in him, he returned in the power. If the word of God is being tested in you right now, get ready. You're about to receive the anointing, the power, a new level of the anointing over your life. So we see that Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this man, Jesus Christ, he was anointed first with the Holy Spirit, then with power. And what did he do? The Bible says he went about doing good. Jesus went about doing good. In every religion, whenever people talk about Jesus Christ, not just in Christianity, but in all the, the religions out there, you'll often hear people say, Jesus Christ did good. He was a good person. And Jesus did good while on the earth. While on the earth, he was filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with power, and he went about doing good. Well, what was the good that he did? The Bible says he went about doing good, healing, healing. That means he eradicated sickness. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He healed all that were oppressed of the devil. That means sickness which Jesus healed is an oppression of the devil. Ah, you've heard it. Sickness is an oppression of the devil. Now, I did not say that if you are sick, you are possessed by a devil. I said if you are sick, if you experience sickness in your body, in your soul, in your mind, it is an oppression of the devil. It is an attack of the devil on your life. Now, the medical world sees the effects of this attack. And they diagnose the effects of the attack. And of course, they treat the effects of the attack. But we in the kingdom of God understand that this is simply a demonic spirit. And the reason why our healing ministry is so successful is because we go after that demon spirit, we bind that spirit, and immediately that person who was oppressed of the devil, he is set free. They are healed. So Jesus Christ of Nazareth went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And if God is with you, you too will have power over the devil. If Jesus Christ is not Lord of your life, I recommend today that you make him Lord of your life. Then when he comes inside you, you too, through the Lord Jesus Christ, will have power over the devil. Now, God is good. Jesus went about doing good. The Bible says in James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no change, neither shadow of turning. So every good gift, every perfect gift comes from heaven. That's why Jesus Christ was good and perfect. He still is good and perfect. The Bible says in Psalms 25, 8, Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners the way. God is good and upright. Psalms 34 verse 8 says, 
Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. So we see that everything about God is good. And hey, it gets better. The Bible teaches us that God makes good things. Not only is He good, but He makes good things. We read in Genesis 1.31, And God saw everything that He made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So God makes everything, including man, and He says it's very good good. When God made you, He made man perfect. He made man perfect. But sin came into the world and death by sin, which is actually sickness, death by sin. And therefore, what God had made perfect, Satan has oppressed and tried to destroy. God made good things. What about the thoughts that God has? We said that God is good. He comes from heaven. Uh, uh, everything, everything that comes from heaven is good. We learned that He only makes good things. Well, what about His thoughts? Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you. This is what God says. Says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. There's no evil when God thinks. To give you an expected end, to give you a favor, to give you a blessing. So when God thinks, He thinks about blessing you. He's, he only makes good things. Everything about God is good. God is good all the time. He thinks good thoughts. He does good things. And the Bible teaches us that everything that comes from heaven, including Jesus Christ, is good. We know that God hates sickness. God hates sickness and disease. And we read in Matthew 4, 23, that Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. God's plan is to heal every sickness, every disease. And as I said to you, God is good. Now, if God is good, that brings us to a very important point. One of the major reasons why people do not experience healing is because they believe or they have been taught that sickness is suffering with Christ. It's from God. They have been taught that God is testing them through the sickness. They have been taught that God is punishing them through sickness. They have been taught that God is showing off for them like He showed off for Job through sickness. All of those is incorrect and even opposes the teaching of the Bible. I'm going to go through them just now in a second. God is not testing you. You are not suffering with Christ through sickness. God is not punishing you because of something that you did. We just read that when He thinks about you, He doesn't have evil thoughts. And neither is God showing off with you like He did with Job. If you believe any of those lies, then you are double-minded. And how can a God that has put sickness on you, that's been responsible for sickness, be able to heal you. You'll be double-minded. And because people are double-minded, they receive nothing from the Lord. Because they believe that God is testing them with sickness, because they believe God is punishing them, because they believe God is showing off for them, they do not get healed. Now, God is good, as we've read. And I am a father. I know some of you out here, you're a parent. Would you break your child's hand to test your child to see if your child loves you? Would you inject your, your child with a deadly virus and say, well, I'm just uh, uh, showing off with you. I'm, I'm just testing you. 
or it's time you suffered with me as well. You wouldn't do that. You are good. God is even better than us. He will not test us through sickness. He will not punish us with sickness. Neither is God showing off with you. People misread the book of Job. I've heard sometimes some preachers say that, that God removed the edge from around Job. That is not what the Bible teaches. The Bible says that God pointed out to Satan that the edge has been removed. It does not say that God removed the edge. In fact, if God removed the edge, we would have a serious problem because the God that we serve would now become a covenant-breaking God. And so when we tell people that God removed the edge from around Job, we actually tell people that God is a covenant-breaking God. Well, what was the edge around Job? Why couldn't Satan touch Job? Because Job applied the blood. Every day, he applied the blood around his family, around his possessions, around his home. And because of that, there was an edge around Job, and Satan could not touch Job. The Bible says that he that breaketh an edge, a serpent will bite him. And so, if God broke the edge, God would therefore have given Satan permission to attack him. We know that God never did that, and God will never do that. So God could never break the edge. Well, why did the edge break? And who broke it? Well, Job stopped applying the blood. And because he stopped applying the blood, the edge was gone. In fact, he declares, the thing that I feared the most has come upon me. What did he fear the most? That the edge around his family would be broken, that Satan would attack them. And so, by stop applying the blood, he allowed the edge to be removed. All God did was declare to Job, the edge is gone. So God did not remove the edge from Job. And neither, neither will God remove the edge from around your life. He is not a mean and bitter God. He is a good and loving God. So when sickness comes on you, He is not showing off with you. Neither is it a test. Neither is God punishing you. Neither is it suffering with Jesus. It is an oppression of the devil. And until you understand that, you will hinder your healing, hinder your miracle. Because a double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. You cannot believe God brought this on me and believe God is so good that God will heal me. They are opposites. They are opposites. So get the truth. Get the understanding. If you have believed that God was testing you, if you have believed that God was punishing you, if you have believed that God was showing off with you, if you have believed that God put the sickness on you so that you could suffer with Jesus and identify with Him, repent today. Ask God to forgive you because He is a good God. Break that lie of the devil off your life. So we have learned that God is not responsible for sickness. He is good all the time. He is good all the time. In my book, The Healing Manual, we discuss all the, the, the principles required, the steps required to getting healed. We've had testimonies of people, while they were reading The Healing Manual, they experienced miraculous healings because the Word... We frequently receive many responses from people who have been touched by the glory of God during your Miracle Moment prayer towards the end of the TV program. These are some of the responses. Dear Pastor Mudli, My name is Caroline. I live in Zimbabwe. I have a heart disease. Today, as I was watching you on television, you said there is a lady with a heart problem. Your name is Caroline. God is healing you. God's healing someone with a heart. Caroline, Caroline, Thank you, Lord. Caroline, with your heart. God's healing your heart. You, you, uh, you, you suffer at night, a lot at night with pains in your heart. And God's healing you right now. He's making your heart whole. I felt a sensation 
in my body as God healed me. It's now time for your miracle moment. We are trusting God for your complete healing. We want you as a point of contact to stretch forth your hand towards the screen and believe with us as we believe with you for your miracle. Let's pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that every person that is watching right now will be completely healed, completely restored. We thank you for breakthroughs. We thank you for healing. We thank you for all kinds of miracles to your glory. We thank you that every prayer request has been answered right now in the name of Jesus, that Lord, you are making your people whole again in Jesus' mighty name. I just see somebody with diabetes being healed right now. I, I, there's a warmth, there's a warmth in your body, uh, there's a warmth in your body around your pancreas area. You're feeling a warm to heat. God is giving you a brand new pancreas, a brand new pancreas, a brand new pancreas, a brand new pancreas. I see somebody in the ears. The ossicles are frozen, and God is loosening them up right now. The hearing is popping open in Jesus name it's popping open right now in Jesus name there you go there you go there you go there you go go test out your hearing you are healed in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name thank you father in Jesus wonderful name amen amen, amen. I just see someone having a lot of difficulty yes. with your toes uh, and God is touching your toes Hallelujah. right yes. now and healing you thank you Jesus. you'll be walking again thank you with Jesus. balance thank you'll you, not be afraid to walk again and to put on your shoes uh, and I, I know God is healing you right now. So receive that healing. Amen. Amen. This is Pastor Siva Mudli. And Pastor Jesse Mudli. Reminding you that miracles, miracles are, are normal. normal.